On a night where comebacks and coronations were short-circuited after getting their circuits crossed to start the game. Rangers give up three in the first period, cannot quite come back enough, and they lose it 4-2 on Long Island to the Islanders. Inside our Delta MSG studios, alongside Henrik Lundqvist and Steve Valiquet, I'm John Giannone. We began the night, Hank, talking about the intensity that tonight would generate for a team in the Rangers trying to hold on to the President's Trophy chase, trying to hold on to first place in the division, and trying to get themselves as ready as possible for the postseason. What do you make of the 60? Well, the first period, the Islanders played so aggressively. They, they were on their toes, and they made it really hard for the Rangers to get their game going. For the next two periods, the Islanders just tried to defend. Uh, I mean, they were hanging on in the third period, and the Rangers had really strong push, both in the second and third period. It was just not enough. But a lot of credit to the Rangers team. I think this is one of the reasons why they've had so many wins this year. You know, thinking back of years playing, when, when you have a first period like that, you're down 3 nothing. It's hard to get your game going and believe that you can do it, but this team can. Yeah. And they were able to come back in this game, and it was close. I mean, Valarmo came up huge in the third period, but overall, obviously, that first period cost them. And a massive amount of block shots for the Islanders, 34 in all, and that helped them hold on for their fifth straight win. It was a night where the Rangers allowed the first goal a little, little more than four minutes into the game, Steve, yep. and in less than 10 minutes after that, it was 3 nothing. It had the playoff feel. The, the goals were all broken plays in front of the net, and a big piece of the Islanders' offense since the All-Star break and since their recent run of success has been goals like this. You know, they're getting bounces, and... This one goes off the stick blade of Lindgren in front, so that's a broken play goal number one. Uh, broken play goal number two, it's, it's a double deflection, and you're aiming to have one deflection. When you get two, it's not really by design. There's definitely some luck there. And goal number three is off the end wall, and then thrown net front, and the Rangers just didn't find uh, their pace to be able to pick up checks in front of their net in the first period, but after that, Everything was pretty clear. Igor didn't have a hard night in the second and third period, but he was under siege in the first they period. They did a really good job coming to the net with two guys, mm -hmm. sometimes three, and it made it really hard for the Rangers to defend. And obviously, you, you do get, to your point, you get bounces when you have two guys always going to the net. But second and third period, we didn't see that at all from them. But right. it, again, it was enough for them. Yeah, Islanders had 17 shots in the first period, only 12 for the rest of the game, and that included the empty netter that made it 4-2. Let's begin the reaction inside the Rangers dressing room. Let's hear from the captain, Jacob Truba, with Michelle Jingris. Not the result that you wanted, but what did you think of your team's response tonight? Uh, I thought the second and third were much better. Um, just didn't really match the, the intensity in the, in the first period. Uh, once we got our game up to to speed. I thought the second and third were, were pretty good for us. Um, just uh, just not enough. What did they do well in the first period to just kind of get you guys out of your game or as you mentioned maybe not get, have the intensity match like you were hoping for? Yeah I think their their desperation level, their intensity, their, uh, their attitude was, was higher than ours out of the gate. Um, I mean, it's not not good today, obviously, but uh, I think it's something we can we can look at and that's the level we got to get to to start ramping our game up for the playoffs. Jacob, just see Chris get hurt at a certain point, Mika get hurt at a certain point. Are, it, are there a little more nerves involved with that because of how close the playoffs are? Um, I mean, obviously we don't want anybody getting hurt right now. Ever, I guess you never really want anybody getting hurt. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I guess you, you know, hold your breath, but you, you think about it for a second. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully those guys are right, and uh, we got we got a full team going to the next game. Some silver lining, your special teams was rolling tonight. Is that... Something you can take away a positive from the, uh, from the night? Yeah, I mean, the power play is obviously good. I think they've been good uh, pretty much all year. Um, yeah, we got I don't think there's much more to the more to the story than we were, weren't ready to match the intensity in the first period and play better in the second and third. So that is a succinct summary of what transpired tonight. Islanders were just more desperate, more intense in the first period. You heard Jacob Truba also there talk about the Ranger power play. The good news is the Ranger power play scored twice, Steve. The bad news is the Rangers did not score at five on five. We're going to go inside the film room powered by CDW, and we're going to check out how the Rangers did get those two power play goals. I thought there was a really nice commitment to motion up top uh, between Fox, Panarin, and Zibanejad. And what that did was just add some confusion and some misdirection to the New York Islanders as they tried to penalty kill. Uh, Fox got the puck up top here to Zibanejad, and he's passing it to Panarin, who is in his position because a switch has taken place and Mika's thinking about getting a switch one more time with him, moves the puck to Panarin one more time up top 
And, you know, don't forget, at this moment, Fox is getting lost a little bit because that's the idea by design. And Panarin takes the focus to be able to get this puck through. And it was a little easier for the Islanders to allow pucks through on the penalty kill uh, than it was at five on five where they were able to get there. And you see Kreider getting his deflection there. That's his 16th net front goal where he's screening the goalie this year, most in the NHL. The Rangers win a faceoff here, and this is their 18th goal off a faceoff. Everybody rushes the net. The Rangers actually take a little more time up top than they typically do to get it through, but it's one more time, a wrist shot that works on the power play that didn't work as well at five on five. And that was a big piece of this game, guys. It was how the Islanders packed it in. And I wonder if you want to deliver the puck a little bit differently at five on five, keeping it low with some hard shots. Um, it's not as easy for the Islanders to block those as it is to front the ones that are coming in. Not as hard, the wrist shots. Mm. I mean, you watch that power play and, and then you start breaking down the PK for the Islanders and they were probably at least six feet deeper than the Rangers PK, for example. There was no pressure. And the fact is this, if, if you're not going to play a great PK against the Rangers right now, you're going to pay the price. That's just simple as that. And that's why I was pretty confident going into the second. As long as they get opportunities on the power play, it's going to be a goal here because yeah. it, it was just too easy in my mind for the Rangers to move the puck around, to find the openings, and then the one goal to overplay, to overskate the situation and open up the lane in the middle, and that led to Fox goal. And the range, the Islanders were disciplined in that third period, did not take a penalty, although every Ranger would disagree. There should have been a penalty in the last 10 seconds on the check against Vincent Trocek. But nonetheless, Rangers lose 4-2. Adam Fox with his power play goal, 16th goal for him this season. Let's hear from Adam Fox after the game. You know, they're a desperate team right now and uh, came out with a lot of fire. And, yeah, we didn't, we didn't match that. We found our game later on, but, uh, you know, they're going to try and shut it down after they get that big of a lead. Adam, you feel like with the way the power play is going, you guys are you know, never out of any game when you get those opportunities? Yeah, I think uh, we want to make a difference in games, and, uh, you know, especially the timeliness of goals, I think, uh, when you're down and, and need one. And I know recently we've, you know, been a little you know, stalled at home in, in some games, down 2 nothing, and gotten one, and that's kind of jump-started us. So I think it's, it's been good to, uh, you know, be productive, and even if we don't score, get some momentum off them, too.